I mean, what kind of what kind of internal drive does that take for your entire existence to be destroyed in one moment that you can't control? And then for you to have the intestinal fortitude to get up and finish. How many people you know, and I know some, that if that happened to them, they would just kind of quit? They would just kind of lie down and let the paramedics come take them away, and that's it. Guy finished. He said, this is what I'm going to get done. And no matter what happened to me, this unfortunate thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And you got to have that in yourself if you want to get things done, all right? There's one last thing I want to talk to you about today, all right? Before we end, and you guys got to go back to class. That is <coughs> failure is okay. Anybody who tries anything will never succeed 100% of the time. You won't. It's the way of life. But it's how you use that failure to learn about yourself, to learn about other people, which really matters. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of some folks that had some really bad failures in their lives. This band went to do a recording in a studio, and they were told that they had no future in show business, and that their style of music was on the way out, and the recording studio actually chose somebody else to uh, record. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Beatles. Best selling man in the history of the world. 24 multi-platinum albums, and the list goes on. They went and practiced for three or four years in Hamburg, Germany, before they, th they figured they got good enough to go try to record what they wanted to do, and they got turned down. But they kept at it, and that's it. A divorced single mother on welfare was rejected by publishers 14 times over seven years. You're nodding your head, who is it? How'd she do? Pretty well. Pretty good? Yeah. She's worth $750 million now. Wow. Not bad, huh? Anybody know this one? Jordan. There were two sophomores playing for a spot on his varsity basketball team, and the coach chose the other guy. Yeah. He's the best. He used that as motivation for the rest of his career. He failed, but he picked it back up. This is one of my favorites. He was kicked out of a school drama with a note she said she was wasting a uh, drama school, saying she was wasting her time and she was too shy to be an actress. Anybody know I Love Lucy? One of the most famous actresses of all time and the first female woman, or female woman, the first woman <laughs> to, want a, to run a TV studio, right? She was one of the longest lived actresses in TV history and she was told by drama people, you're not good enough. Another good one. Anybody know this one? He was told by his school teacher he was too stupid to learn anything wow. and actually failed his first college entrance exam. Anybody know? Not quite. Uh, that was Edison. He invented the light bulb, the car battery, the phonograph, the motion picture camera, the electric grid distribution system, and a whole host of other things. This is from a guy who, when he was in fourth grade, he said that uh, the teacher said he should use his pleasant personality to get a job because he was too dumb to do something intellectual. <laughs> this guy. If you have not failed, you have not lived. Period. End of story. If you're not afraid to actually experience that, you're never going to get anything done. In conclusion, right? the people that say, I got this, that take the responsibility to do something, are the ones that make folks' lives better. You are those people. Because you are in this organization, that makes you them. So I would encourage you, get other folks involved, make it fun, finished. Don't be afraid to screw up, but most of all, set your goals and go after it. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Or you got it? Yep. I want to thank you all very much for having me today. I do appreciate that. Five minutes. Does anybody got any questions? We got, like, we got like seven minutes. Seven minutes. Or what is it? What time do we got? Twelve or five? Four. Oh. Twelve or four. So we got. Yeah. Anybody have any quick questions? I'd love to answer. This guy went to Harvard. He's done a lot of things. He's working. Up Yo. Top.
You plan to run for governor? No. Yes. <laughs> Did you ever fail? Did I ever fail? Yeah. Oh God, yes. I um I ran for Congress in 2008. I raised four hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars. <laughs> And the guy that I ran against in the primary was a wealthy oil man from Hobbs who uh, wrote himself a check for $750,000. I wrote myself a check for 45 bucks, um, which was kind of fun. <laughs> I lost by four points because he had been on the TV for eight weeks and I only had enough for two weeks. That sucked. And then two years later, I ran for the Public Regulation Commission, which is uh, a board in the state that does a lot of the electricity. And I mean, I'm a total nerd, and this was like a total mobile thing, and it was great. But I was a Democrat and ran in a Republican year, and most of us lost, and I did too. And I gotta tell you, I was out. I was done. There's that old saying about hitting your head against a brick wall. Uh, it just gives you a flat head, but... Two years ago, the lady who was in um, the House of Representatives seat that I now represent decided about a week before filing date that she didn't want to do it. So I got called and I said, you know, what the heck, I'll give it one more, and now I'm in there, and it's good. It's tough. It's emotionally draining, but you know, it's worth it. Yeah. So what would you say is your inner drive that keeps you going? I enjoy the feeling that I get when something's done. Like, I worked really hard on that spaceport. When I was, I was, I used to be on the county commission and I worked really hard to get a tax pass so we could build a spaceport. When I went to, uh, some of you in science and math classes here are being funded by money that we have appropriated through that. And I was at the county commission like three or four weeks ago when you had Stan Rounds, who runs a school district here in town, was saying that you all, students, have doubled your participation in higher level science and math classes over the past seven years. I mean, that makes me feel really good because that's where the jobs are, right? And if people are saying, hey, I'm inspired by this, I want to get into this, I want to learn science, I want to learn math, I want to get these jobs that are coming out, that just gives me a feeling of like, I meant something. Something that I did, something I put effort into, and and used a lot of time and resources getting done, it means something. Because folks like you are going to be able to benefit from that. And that is really amazing. I like it. Yeah? Why did you choose to become a politician? Why did I choose to become a politician? Um, I think that, well, first of all, uh, you know, when I ran here, there's not a lot of young people in politics. And I'm 35, which to you guys is probably ancient <laughs> beyond all reckoning. But I'm actually the youngest person in the House of Representatives. And I really felt like there was a lot of younger folks that weren't getting represented. Like, I still know what it means to have student loans when a lot of the people that are in their 60s and 70s don't. I know what it means to be unemployed. <laughs> it sucks, <laughs> right? A lot of folks don't that are retired. They, they may have been unemployed 40, 50 years ago, but it's not right in front of them. It's not something they feel and taste. And I really felt it was important to have someone like me represented in the bodies that make the laws. I mean, I'm in a body that makes all the laws that govern you guys. So we say, okay, uh, you need to have X requirements to graduate from high school. You know, we're setting the minimum wage. So for those of you all that work at restaurants or whatever, we set your stuff. I mean, those are important things. And for me, having that representation combined with that feeling of actually accomplishing something was really important. And, and politics is a way to do that. Anybody else? All right, you're going to the break. Many of your seniors are coming back for your senior year. Keep your energy up, guys. I know it's tough, uh, but I really, really appreciate your time, and I hope you guys get a lot of stuff done. Thank you all. Give another hand. Don't chat, everybody.